Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. Today we're talking about this big beauty of a plant, a thornless blackberry. How to prune them, how to optimize your maximum fruit potential. Stay tuned. I'm Stacy Tapes. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. So this, guys, is a variety of thornless blackberry that's called Triple Crown. And about five years ago, I bought three plants at a garden center. They've never stopped and I've never looked back. I think this spring I gave away six or eight propagated plants um, to friends and family who wanted to grow their own because they're just so remarkable. Uh, the most beautiful thing I think about thornless blackberries, other than that the fruit's huge, is that they're thornless so you don't get harmed in any way you don't got to put any gear to work on with them because they're so easy to work with i want to cover really three basic areas with thornless blackberries today with you one is you got to be able to take away the wood that fruited last year to leave the wood that grew new last year get rid of the old fruited wood that way the new wood that grew can produce fruit so we'll just cover that quickly we're going to look at are you going to build a trellis or some type of suspension structure that's going to hold the plants or are you just going to trim them at about chest height 120 centimeters or so and grow them in little statues like raspberries that's the second thing. And then the third thing, propagation. You have kind of two options. You can dig up the underground shoots that have created new plants, or there are places where the vines will grow down and they will touch the ground and where they connect to the ground, they'll produce roots and start to plant a new, start a new plant from above. So you can also propagate them that way. So cutting off the fruited wood is the first thing. Building a structure or just growing them as towers and trimming them and then dealing with propagation so you can give some love to your neighbors and friends. Let's take it from there. So we're just going to talk here now, guys, about last year's wood that fruited versus last year's wood that's new that's going to fruit this year. It's pretty simple to figure it out because if you wait as long as I have for the purposes of this video, you're going to have wood that looks like this. And look at the dried up fruit is still sitting on there. And so, you know, that fruited last year and it's doing exactly what you'd expect it to do nothing the next year it's completely dead whereas the wood that grew new last year is getting ready to fruit it's got leaves it's got flowers and every one of those flowers is going to turn into a monster berry so generally the other giveaway on last year's wood that produced fruit is it's tied up if you worked with the plant at all so if you untie it and then cut it off right at the ground the way you would a raspberry cane that's spent you've gotten rid of last year's fruiting wood and you've allowed this year's uh, fruiting wood to get busy that's all you need to know in that regard and usually I try to grow them about 18 inches to two feet apart so that's like 45 to 60 centimeters apart with three to five canes per I'll just show you a shot of that so with these plants here I'm growing them very similar to raspberries every 45 to 60 centimeters apart there's a clump and out of each clump is growing last year's dead wood that's what needs to be pruned away so I'm just grabbing my trimmers and seeing that that one comes away and then this year's new wood is going to grow up in that same spot so what that means is the roots are perennial okay the roots are just going to keep on growing in that spot but the wood that grows from it is biennial it's there for two years it grows one year it fruits the next then you cut it off so perennial roots biennial wood that makes sense right then every 60 centimeters i have another one here's all this new wood that's growing up from last year and there's the stuff that fruited last year so i'm going to cut it off and i'll just bring it over to the camera so you can see exactly what i'm talking about and it's got you know the old spent pieces of fruit on it it's totally done you can tell there's no life in it you don't have to work too hard to figure that out whereas the new wood that's going to produce fruit is in amazing shape there's one more it's kind of done like that and that's it and you'll just notice beautifully here there's no weeds and i don't do any weeding i've got a drip line under all this and this is just cardboard and bark chips okay so cardboard and bark chips with a drip line underneath and i put on the water every week or two in summer and they get all the moisture they need because thornless blackberries are incredibly vigorous they don't need a lot of help they just get it done so you'll see all down this row i've got a post i've got wire at the height that i want my plants to top out at and at that point I have them grow laterally along the wire. These are my ties that have been used previous years. I use twine sometimes in places, but I found this is fail safe. It's a type of tie meant for things like berries. It's right on a coil 
you can pull it into there and if you look closely it's got a built-in cutter mechanism which you click it you've got your piece and then when you've got a berry in this case which is taller than the wire I just tie it on I tie it loosely not tight it gives room for the cane to size up over the season and when I this is done fruiting this season and I trim it I can just pull it right through the loop of twine and it's ready to go one more piece like that that's on there already and if I position it right this is going to bear the weight of the fruit and we've got some magical fruit ready to harvest thornless blackberries go team and I'm basically just going down the row and doing that when they get to this height I want to stimulate growth so around that height if you just nip the tip nip the tip that's going to help it grow and push energy down for flowering and for fruiting you don't want too much energy to go on the laterals so there's the main shoot that grows up and then there's these little laterals so if they start getting more than you know about 20 30 centimeters nip them off and again drive energy into the shoot these guys are ready to produce yeah so this is a situation where the thornless blackberries that i've let grow i'm not cutting them off at 120 centimeters and putting them up on a piece of wire i'm letting this trellis like a clematis or like grapes but really up high so that i can walk under it it's like an arbor really simple concept i use tree fruit post stakes at about oh two meter intervals and i just put a two by two across on top of them and screw it on so it's just thin posts going up with the trellis uh, cross top or beam and then i just use that same green tie wire and tie it up along the way you can see here this is already getting way out of the field and this is growing about four to five meters across and it's gone two meters down so this is six meters from the root system this one here six meters from the root system you can see how many flowers there are my beehives are about two meters away on my right on your left so there is so much fruit coming on and i can actually smell the nectar in the hive that's coming from this fruit it's amazing so this is a great way to get something beautiful visually it's stunning incredible food for your bees for the local birds and for your family to enjoy it's almost limitless what comes off a trellis thornless blackberry like this simple posts and a cross beam so talking about the idea of propagating new thornless blackberry plants there's not a whole lot of work you got to do because they do that for you this is a mother plant right here that's been growing for years and i keep pruning off last year's wood and letting the new wood fruit it's amazing and it's producing runners and if you look over here this is about one meter away here's a new little runner i can choose to just trim it off you can run a lawnmower over it or you can dig it up and put it in a pot and give a gift of love to someone else another meter over here's another one that's coming up it's growing right in amidst my corn if i don't want it there i got to do something with it they pull up really easily just so you know like that's it he's done he won't bother me anymore but this one is nicely put together in the center i can easily get a shovel around him dig him up and put him in a new place propagation with thornless blackberries is that easy dig up a plant that grew underground and put it in a pot and pass along the love there you go so you can see looking here at just how much uh, abundance there is in the blackberries this is harvest time last season off these same bushes that i've been showing you guys about you can see that the harvest comes in a very strong wave there's lots of red berries that aren't quite ready yet but the berries when they're ready to harvest are truly black and they're way larger than prickly wild blackberries they're incredibly large i believe they're just as sweet because there's no prickles on the vines and they're thornless they're incredibly uh, fun and safe to harvest and they're probably the most abundant berry i have to pick for the work i put in to grow them there you don't have to bend over like strawberries they come out three or four times more plentiful than raspberries they're way easier and quicker to pick than something like blueberries they just win at every single level they freeze really well they eat fresh really well they're great in smoothies as well so i consider thornless blackberries a big win take a look at the size of these berries and the abundance here this is an amazing crop to grow i know you're gonna love doing it so everybody that's it for this episode of sustainable stace on the topic of thornless blackberries i think we've covered the basics everything you need to know to master growing something that pretty much grows itself and just feeds you with incredible generosity digging up those underground shoots to put in a pot to pass along to others or start new plants 
growing little towers at about 120 centimeters and tying them to a wire and or putting them on a big, big beautiful trellis like a centerpiece of art with flowers and fruit that could decorate your garden or your yard. And then finally, just this idea of making sure that the wood that fruited last year with the dead flower buds and fruit buds gets cut off so that this year's new wood can produce flowers, can produce fruit, and keep on being vigorous and abundant. Until next time, thanks a lot. And guys, if you've been watching this video on YouTube, just want to ask you to please down on your bottom right there to push the subscribe button so you'll keep on getting emails whenever we put out another Sustainable Stace resource. Pass along those hints and tips that are hopeful, helpful, and healthy. Thanks a lot.